Crossroads Media. Well, that was one way to wrap things up before the Flyers head into break. 18-11-4. Pretty remarkable when you think about what we expected. But man, what a crazy game in Detroit. You're on the second half of a back-to-back. You're traveling to. And now you go down 5-1 to start it off. When Carter Hart looks a little rusty throughout the first 20 minutes, they fight back. I don't know what John Tortorella said in between periods. I don't know what the hell he did to inspire that crew. Maybe it was Nick Sheeler getting pissed off and he was running out of the box going bananas. It reminded me of the Bash Brothers. I thought I was watching Mighty Ducks D2. I thought I was watching Team USA versus Team Iceland. All right, and you got the Bash Brothers trying to get the guys going. Regardless, whatever it was, it worked. And you could see a very common theme with how they scored all of their goals to initiate this comeback. It was throwing pucks on net and either take away the goalie's eye and get a tip. I mean, when you're down 5-1 and you throw two pucks on net, Travis Sanheim does. One gets deflected by Morgan Frost. The other, Sean Couturier. Just beautiful. Get pucks on net. Good things happen. The same happened with Hathaway's goal, right? It was uh, Tyson Forster. Oh, no, excuse me. That was Scott Lawton who shot the puck right uh, right inside the blue line. But Forster, when Lawton cleaned up the garbage, very similar thing thing. When he got the puck right inside the offensive zone, he put it on net and you're just getting deflections or you're getting greasy ones or like Owen Tippett when they took the lead 6-5 and we all thought it would be enough. He takes an outside shot. He drives the net. He stops at the blue paint and the puck's sitting there squeezing through and you just easily bang it home right across the goal line. Unreal. Unreal for them to snag a point there. Toughness. All right. Unwilling to go down. Unwilling to go away. You know how easy it is to just wrap it up with a the last game, essentially, before you get some time off with your family. You're on the road. You did that while having barely any energy being on a second half of a back-to-back. It's easy to say it's not our night. Maybe Carter Hart came back and he was a little rusty, although. Some of those goals in the first period, I don't put the full blame on him. Cam York can't get the puck out of the crease. There's three flyers just watching and waiting around for someone else to make a play. That's inexcusable. One was on the power play. Some of them, you know, it's like there's a lot that happened as a breakdown. It's more than just Carter Hart. But there's no doubt Carter Hart wasn't super sharp to start things off. But he also had a lot of time off and he was battling an illness. He was sick. It would probably go that way in the early stages. And by overtime, the guy was gross again. He made some spectacular saves in overtime. It's just unfortunate right before the overtime period, he allowed a squeaker. Tough angle shot. Sitting there by the post. It somehow finds a hole and gets through. Yeah, he would like to have that one back. I couldn't believe it. It was deflating. And in the overtime period, Carter Hart stood on his head. I'll take the positives here, though. You told me they're 18, 11, and 4 as we head into a Christmas break. Uh, I would have kissed you on the mouth. I don't know. I don't know know what the hell that means. Uh, But this is following a loss against Nashville. Okay, you lose 4-2 to two with an empty net. John Tortorella not happy with the lack of effort, I guess, on the four check, getting in on the puck. Ugh, Cam Atkinson really hurt you. Not only could he not bury on a breakaway, and it looked like he opened up the five hole beautifully and just couldn't get it through. And he did a good job actually finding the five hole, but when you can't score... It all goes south. It's one of those. 
He cannot buy one. He could do everything right and it still go wrong. And that's pretty much where Cam Atkinson is. But when Nashville scored the game-winning goal with about four minutes to go in the third period, he gets outworked and outmuscled in the neutral zone. And then also defensively, you cheat towards the defenseman because you don't want to puck to go from the half wall up. But what ends up happening when you start moving towards your defenseman. There's a wide open space right in the slot area, and there was some good patience made by Nashville. And before you know it, it's in the back of your net, and you're not able to climb out of that hole with just a few minutes left to go. They did score a power play goal. The Flyers did. Sean Couturier got on the board, but it doesn't mean I'm satisfied with their power play when they're giving up shorthanded goals. Uh, you cannot give up shorthanded goals. You cannot give up shorthanded goals. You cannot give up shorthanded goals. I already hear that there's some fear that they can't keep up this pace because what are they doing? It's obvious they're jumping up in the play and they're trying to get a lot of these up the ice opportunities. And uh, Is it possible that they can flourish and, and not wear down over time if they continue to push this way after Christmas break is over? And I don't see why not. You're young. Joel Farabee with a toe drag and then Bobby Brink with a finish. Maybe a little change up. Maybe a little knuckler, but it doesn't matter. Get it through. What a filthy, 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 filthy move by Joel Farabee. But why can't he? Why can't he and why can't everybody else keep up the pace? There's a lot of young kids here. All right, we're not filled with 38-year-olds and Joe Thornton and Joe Pavelski on a line with, uh, I don't know, give me another guy that's old. Patrice Bergeron, maybe? I don't know. There's a lot of old, grizzled vets with some gray-ass beards. That's not what we're dealing with. So uh, get up ice. Get up ice, Owen Tippett. Get up ice, Morgan Frost. Get up ice, anybody else. Speaking of Morgan Frost, what a bounce he got against Nashville, huh? He's behind the net. The puck goes off of his shin pad, off of his pants, goes up, hits the back of the goalie, and gets in. Hey, man. That's what happens when you're playing hockey and you're doing it at a clip like this. Sometimes you get those lucky bounces. Sometimes you create your own bounces. When things are going well, let's go. You you, you create your own luck, and that's pretty much the example that uh, I can put on full display for that description. I tweeted out there, Stanley Cup level bounces. That's what this team's got right now. The problem is they don't have a Stanley Cup level power play, and it will be the death of them. There's no doubt. I mean, I can see it right here, a mile away. There's nothing else you can say about it other than that. I hated seeing Patty Kane dominate. Why? 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 I get flashbacks of the Chicago Blackhawks. Why? 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 The dude gets two Genos in the first period. Why? 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 And then I also have to deal with the shootout move. Why? 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 I can't deal with it. It's not a good feeling. It eats me alive. It brings me back to bad times, especially when you get a fluky goal in a game where Patty Kane's playing as well. Why? I don't know. It's a great question. But why not utilize TickPick? That's the real question here. And if you don't know much about TickPick, you're missing out. They give you free money. That's right. TickPick gives you free money when you're looking to buy tickets to watch the Flyers play live down in South Philadelphia, to watch Joel Embiid live down in South Philadelphia, to watch the Eagles, or maybe even to go to a concert. So what you need to do is click the link down below in the description, and my promo code will already be be activated to that link. And if you spend over $99 on tickets, which is very easy to do, call up a family member, call up a cousin, call up, I don't know, your kids, say, hey, let's go to a game as a family. It's pretty simple to get over 99 bucks, but you get $10 off and their ticket prices will beat any of the major competing marketplaces. They're so confident about it, they guarantee it. If you find the same seats elsewhere at a better price than TickPick, you get 110% of the price difference in form of TickPick credit. So they have the best prices on the market. And there's no more doing math in your head to prepare for how much extra you spend on top of the listed price than on other sites. Because the price you see on TickPick is the price you pay at checkout, period, end of story. There's no added service fees, hidden fees, or otherwise. So make sure you join the TickPick. 
pick family. All right, this team is really enjoyable. This team has given me everything and then some leading up to this point. And what a crazy finish. I mean, I think that perfectly kind of sums up those first, what is it, 18 plus 11, would that be 29? And then 29 plus 4 is 33. The first 33 games of the season, wow. They're 33 games in. They're almost halfway through the grind. I feel like the season just started. I do. I feel like I just saw Tortorella behind the bench for the first time this year. And, man, they've been outstanding. They've just been outstanding, and they never give up. And and, and this is why it's been important to value the approach that John Tortorella really does force upon you. Think about what was ever said in between the first and second. Do you get that if it's non, not John Tortorella? Or do you have a young group that packs it in, that doesn't have the same work ethic, that doesn't believe that there's plenty of time to turn things around? I think it's pretty clear what the message was. Get shots on that. Just keep firing shots. You never know what can happen. Because every goal except for the first one, when they were down 2 nothing to make it 2-1, every goal except except for that, was from outside, really. It wasn't a high threat. It wasn't a crazy, absurd scoring chance. Travis Sanheim throws pucks on net, and good for him. Good for you, Travis Sanheim. And your guy, Nick Sealer, his job is to create a spark. His job is to create energy. All right, my buddy who lives, uh, well, he lives in Boston now, but he's a diehard Detroit Red Wings fan. He's from Michigan. He moved to Boston for work, and he's texting me, Nick Sealer's a punk. Nick Sealer's a bitch. I can't believe he dropped his gloves there after a clean hit. There's no reason to be aggravated there. The guy's looking for something. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you try and get the boys inspired, get a little jolt in it when you're down so big? You're down four goals. That's when you're supposed to look. And by the way, that's what the guy's contract is for. Nick Sealer ain't here to be a shutdown defenseman. This dude ain't here to run a power play. This dude ain't here to do anything other than drop the mitts, block some shots, and then eat some minutes. That's his role. That's his role. And he did it to a T. While Morgan Frost is here to produce offensively. Sean Couturier is here to win draw, shut down the opponent's number one line, and score as well. Well, Nick Sealer held his end of the bargain. And everything shifted after that. So we have to give him credit. You know Torch love that too. The fact that they got a point. Yeah, you want to. You definitely want to. It would have been nicer. It would have been sweeter. The comeback would have felt more important. But the Flyers are on high note, okay? Or, or high alert, I should say. There are casuals that have now realized, let me put my notes down here and remember the Flyers play in two nights. I need to check it out. Last night had people flipping the channel and doing a double dip between the Flyers and the Sixers, and not everyone would normally do that. The ones that aren't accustomed to giving the Flyers any time as it's the middle of December, almost Christmas, there's a lot of this fan base that just waits for the postseason. They now have attention of the casuals throughout regular season puck. And that matters. That matters. People are believing. People are excited. And they should be excited. Whether it makes sense or not, it makes no sense that they're doing this. It makes no sense that they have this level of success. I don't care if it makes sense or not. There's a lot of things that don't make sense. Winning a Super Bowl with Nick Foles doesn't make sense, okay? It just doesn't make sense. The World Series run prior to this last year, I didn't get to the World Series, but the World Series run that the Phillies just had two years ago made no sense. There's a lot of things that make no sense. 2010 made no sense. So I don't give a damn if it makes sense or not. 
if it's happening and it's working and it's doing its thing, then I'm here to support it. And I love it. And John Tortorella, his mentality and his approach is why they didn't give up. It's why they continue to fight. Because I'm sure he went in there, ripped them a new asshole, and basically said, if you're not going to do what I ask you to do for the next 40 minutes, you ain't playing. You won't be in the lineup soon. You're going to be sitting your ass on the bench, similar to what we saw Joel Faraby do a, a, a while back when I thought he was unacceptable. Okay? When there were too many odd man rushes given up. That was right around the time they played the Rangers, and there were way too many two-on-ones, way too many three-on-twos, and it was clearly stressed. We cannot allow this to continue to happen. Joel Faraby allowed it to happen. He'll sit your ass. It works. And that goes a long way for the growth of these young kids. Okay. We got any time outline calls, so let's fire these off. Character building performance. Yes. That game might have technically been a loss, but there are so many positive takes away from this game to, to build off of for the future. Once it was 4-2, you can just see the Flyers pressing Detroit, and they were running for their lives for the rest of the game. I'm sure Hart wants that Michael Layton type of goal that he let in you know, to make it 6-6. I'm sure he wants that back. But every goal he has a bad game here and there, and I'm not concerned about that. My only long-term concern is their defensemen as a whole aren't good. Guys like Sealer and Walker have been playing way above their heads this season, and I think that's starting to wear off finally, especially with Sealer. But we really can't ask for more uh, from what we're seeing from this group right now. And I tell you what, if we do get in the playoffs, nobody wants to play against this team in the seven-game series because the opposition will get close to their limits. Go Flyers. Oh, no doubt you know it'll be so brutal. It'll be so annoying. They're the nasty little pests who, by the way, have some skill to finish. And if Cam Atkinson can ever get on the board, that's another element. That's another wave of offense that you have to look out for. I don't know if the power play will ever be fixed because at this rate, it's been so long and you've been so desperate to try and find your answer that you've tried your best stuff, you would think, right? I mean, how much longer are you waiting to try your best stuff. You've tried your best stuff, and none of it has panned out. If none of it has panned out, what's it going to take? Now, maybe it's an unsung hero. Maybe it's someone that you never anticipated that you just throw on there. Like Scott Lawton, for example, and I've seen him, actually, so, you know, I know that there's been some upset fans about maybe Joel Farabee's usage, Scott Lawton. Now, I'm just saying, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? It could just be some random dude they toss out there one day because they're 0 for 9 in their last nine man advantages and then he nets two straight power play goals in, in a game and then maybe it's like, hey, there's some there's some life. All right, we got a little resurgence. There's some births here happening on the power play. Births? Births? Yeah, we got, a, we got a birth. We got a birth on a power play. I, I'm trying to make the word birth work. I don't think it's going to work. Maybe there's something to it. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, this team is not a team that I would like to play against because you know that John Tortorella can have a Columbus Blue Jackets team wear you down and beat, a, I don't know, a Tampa Bay Lightning in the first round of the playoffs. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It's always going to be a tough out. But all these teams are, are basically, to a degree, tough outs because as soon as the playoffs start, it's a totally different season. Who has the hot netminder? Who's got the best goalie? And this team right now has two really good goalies. Erson has become a monster. I have so much confidence in him now. It's been a full 180 for me. But he has turned into a legitimate, serious guy in between the pipes. Uh, it's been great. It's been great to watch. And no matter who's in that, I'm loving it. I'm loving both. I think both can steal you games. I think Carter Hart will be fine as he gets back into rhythm. He was out for a while, and he's dealing with the sickness that clearly knocked him down, not just a, a little sniffle, not just a few coughs. It's serious. 
So it takes some time. We get knocked down and we can't go to work to type on a keyboard for eight hours if you end up having uh, to, to throw up and to use the restroom and the number two doesn't stop flying out of you. We can't even go to work to type emails, yet these pro athletes are out there trying to battle it. It is what it is. I think Carter Hart will be okay long term. The defense, though, yeah, I think that's fair. I think it's fair to wonder, can Sean Walker be amazing forever? Is that really who he is? Probably not. But maybe someone like Rasmus Ristolainen can help fill the gap, where if Sean Walker does fall off a bit, does Rasmus lean into this heavier role and maybe it can close the gap of the fall off? Maybe I'm asking too much out of Rasmus Ristolainen. I do think that he plays his best brand of defense under John Tortorella, and it's not like the most appealing thing and flashiest thing, but you need some tough defensemen that do things out there that aren't as highlight reel-esque and more just a good stick on puck, a good body on body in the corner. All right, utilize your feet and your size to kick the puck to your D partner behind the net. Then you get a good breakout and now you're out in transition. Those little things, maybe, maybe, but also maybe I'm reaching. I don't know. The decor has played above their head. Once again, it doesn't make much sense, but I don't care. I'm just going to ride with it for as long as I possibly can. Thinking about the back-to-back, I don't really feel very good. I think it was a lackluster performance, particularly defensively, and Torts was spot on in his press conference after the Nashville game about the forecheck, which did look better against the Red Wings, but overall I thought they didn't perform to their standard. And you hear that phrase a lot with another team in town that doesn't have a standard because last year is not a standard, but the Flyers definitely have set one. I don't really know how to feel about the Detroit game alone. I think that Carter was really disappointing, and we probably win that game with Ayrson. The defense was obviously atrocious, especially in the first, and you had some puck luck go against you. And I love how the team fought back, and I was at the point of turning off my TV. And I love the effort from the squad, but overall, I feel happy about the season, of course, but iffy about the finish heading into the Christmas break. Go Flyers. Wow, Sam. Okay. I think you might be a little outlier because of how they finished against Detroit. I think they left on a good note. I think that toughness and that grind and the grit was a good way to head into break. Now, trust me. I prefer a beatdown. I want a win. I want a 6-1 domination. The last time these two teams played, it was one nothing, and you secured a win after just scoring one goal. Cam York tries to uh, send the pass through the through the crease area and all. And there you go. And then you hold on to a one nothing win. The 7-6 back and forth. You take the lead. You were down 5-1. You give it right back up. Oh, it was crazy. But because those were the circumstances and, and they were able to muster a win, a, a, a point, excuse me, a point, a point, a point, not a win, a point, I give them a lot of credit. And I feel a lot more positive than you do after this one. It, it's, it's not great to start that way. It's not great to fall down 5-1 and this little back-to-back, you grab one out of a possible four points. But we need to look at the way that um, the identity of the team is playing, and they didn't give up. They didn't pack it in. They let the the Detroit Red Wings know, yo, motherfucker, it ain't over. And I love that attitude about them. We'll take one more call and then uh, close things out. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I mean... I really probably shouldn't have that reaction if you're just looking at the base score of a, you know, loss in the shootout. But the beat down 5-1 in that game and the rally around what Nick Sealer did in that second period, my God, you got to give so much credit to this team. And for Carter Hart, look, he hasn't played in so long. He's been dealing with whatever illness this was. So I guess I, I, we shouldn't have expected five goals in the first period allowed, but and also that sixth goal that he allowed, you know, the ball buster, like right after you take the lead. But the dude stood on his head in the final few minutes of the game and also basically the entire overtime. you got to give this team so much credit, man. Yeah, it stinks, you know, not being able to find a way to get those full two points. But to even get a point out of this game 
when you were just completely out of it right from the very get-go. That is, you know, I feel like that means a lot more about this team than anything else. You know, you could be up freaking 50 to nothing against this team and they'll find a way to lose 50 to 49 or even like find a way to lose in overtime by like 50 to 50, 51 to 50 or something like that. It, it, it's insanely crazy how they managed to do this and get a point out of it. I'm proud. It sucks that they lost in the shootout in the end, but I'm proud that they found a way to get a point. Super, super proud. And looking at the standings, they're below the Rangers. They did play two more games than the Rangers, though. And they're sitting at 40 points. 40 points heading into the Christmas break. Right above the Islanders. Islanders have one less game played. The Capitals have three less games played. But they don't, they don't like, have... Uh, so much talent that the Flyers can't compete with the Capitals. We just watched them play. They can compete with the Islanders. They can compete with the Hurricanes. I know, sometimes you think they can. They can compete with the Devils. They can compete with any of these teams in the Metropolitan. The only obvious, no doubt about it, lock that's significantly better than them are the New York Rangers, who are 22-8-1 with 45 points. The New York Rangers are by far better than them, but there's no other team that That's an automatic, absolute standout, definite a thousand percent better than you in the Metro. You're there with everybody else. And because of that, let's take advantage of it, baby. All right. Let me tell you about HelloFresh. A crazy schedule can make it easy to fall back into your dinnertime recipe rut. So keep mealtime exciting with over 40 recipes to choose from every week. And there's always something delicious to discover with HelloFresh. HelloFresh does all the shopping and meal planning for you. Ingredients arrive at your doorstep pre-portioned and ready to cook along with pictured step-by-step recipe cards how easy is that hello fresh is 25 percent less expensive than takeout so that means you get easy home-cooked meals on the table and even more money back in your pocket go to hellofresh.com slash 50 broads and use code 50 broads for 50 percent off plus free shipping go to hellofresh.com and use code 50 broads for 50 percent off plus free shipping america Excuse me, HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. All right, everybody, have a happy holiday. Have a Merry Christmas. I hope you, uh, 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 um, um, come on, come on. Appreciate all the time with your family and loved ones. Thank you guys all so much for everything you do, and we'll be talking very, very soon.